Uh, yeah. Uh, mm, yeah. Ah, so, I probably should have used a gantry for this. This wobbling, uh, it seems to be getting worse. Anyway, this is a really simple rocket, which I'm going to put into orbit, hopefully, and not make a total fool of myself. Um, I, please, please, please stop. I think it's going to fall over before I launch, because I'm talking. But, um, so, oh, God. I have a couple of solid rocket boosters on here, which are probably not necessary, but they're fun, because they're solid rocket boosters. Think about solid rock, kit, boo, st st stop it. Is it, they, they run at 100% throttle until they run out of fuel, and there's no stopping them or slowing them down until they run out of fuel. Boy, that's unnerving. Why, why do you, okay. So, um, staging is important. I got solid rocket boosters down here in the first stage. When I hit the space bar, they will fire. Then when I hit the space bar again, um, these decouplers that are connecting them to the main rocket will pop off, and the main rocket will fire, which is feeding from this tube, um, so much tilting. And the next stage, uh, this coupler in the middle will pop off. There's an engine in there that'll fire uh, at the same time. And the last stage, uh, this whole thing pops off, and this guy comes back to Earth with a parachute. On the last stage, um, I have throttled up all the way. Just... Huh? Oh! Oh! That happens sometimes. <laughs> All right, let's try this again, this time without talking. Throttle up, and fire! Um, <laughs> oh, I'm going to turn on SAS, and it's a little lighter, press T. That uh, makes your rocket stabilize itself for you, which is important. It's fighting mightily against these solid rocket boosters um, at the moment, because they tend to make it want to fly all over the place. Man, that's loud. Rockets are loud. Whee! Alright, as soon as those guys go off, I'm going to get rid of them. Now, oh, I'm going too fast. So, we're only at like 5,000 feet. We want to keep our uh, velocity down a bit. Because at lower altitudes, you're just fighting terminal velocity, basically. Um, you know, getting faster than like 160 below 6,000 and 200 below 10,000 or so is um, you're just wasting fuel pushing on air. So I'm going to let it creep up. This is fine. Once this gets about 10, it's a good benchmark. And I'm going to tilt her over and give her some juice. You got up here pretty quick to use the solid rocket boosters, but if you're using just liquid, it'll take a lot longer. And controlling your throttle is more important. So the key here, you can get it down to about 45 degrees. The gravity turn. Thrusting sideways. Um, back to the map. Map is important. So here's our trajectory at this point. We are going like that. Um, and this is our apoapsis. We're going to get this into space, which is above 70k, but we'll go up to 80 or 90 or so. Getting pretty low on fuel. That's fine. Uh, we have another stage. A lighter stage with a little rocket, which will be more efficient once we I'm actually get in. There we go. Now, we're just going to take this little dude and wait for this marker. The apoapsis is your high point, the high point of your orbit. And wait for that to get up around 8 or so. Um, note that we're facing this direction. If you can see my mouse pointer, I'm not sure if that works with this shadow play stuff. And this marker is the direction the rocket's actually going. That's gravity turn. We're pointing kind of upwards, and it's getting pulled down by gravity, and we need somewhere between. All right. What is that? 81. So we're going to kill the engines by pressing X. There we go. We're just traveling on a ballistic trajectory now. Just us and our little pod. We've got Bill Kerman, who is miraculously not dead in this save. I don't know how that works. Um, once we get up to this node which will take 1 minute 30 seconds, we're going to fire laterally. So, I'm going to tilt the rocket over. Pew! Like that. This line here is the horizon. Obviously, we're traveling east. You always want to launch to the east, because that's the direction Kerbin is rotating. 
and the rotation of Kerbin um, gives you an extra boost. If you launch the other direction, you're fighting against the rotation. So, I mean, you figure, you know, you're, when you're on the surface, you're moving eastward at a pretty good clip. So, use it. All right. Um, we're approaching apoapsis quickly. When we get to this point, we're going to burn sideways, and that's going to cause this trajectory, line run now, to widen. And the key the goal here to get into orbit is to make this trajectory so wide that even though we're falling toward the planet constantly, we're moving laterally so fast that we miss the planet. Um, so yeah, gravity, orbit. Orbit is just um, falling and missing the ground. That's a Douglas Adams thing. Alright. Oh, we're getting real close now. As soon as this um, slows down, our altitude slows down and comes to a bit of a stop, we will fire again. Slowing, slowing, three seconds. That's good. Whoop! Throttle up, go back to the map, and watch this crazy arc widen. Look at that. Look at it widening. See? And I only have a little teeny rocket on this guy. A little weak rocket. Very fuel efficient. Once you're up and in orbit, out of the atmosphere, the atmosphere is like worse than gravity as far as getting up here. Once we're up here, um, maneuvers take less fuel. Uh, so here we are. This is taking for freaking ever. Alright. Mm -hmm. You know there are like a hundred thousand much, much better tutorials on YouTube uh, to show you how to get a ship into orbit? <laughs> You're watching this one. The hell is wrong with you? Alright. Here we go, here we go. Oh, watch the apoapsis go completely crazy as it uh, suddenly becomes the periapsis. Whoa, look at that, we're in orbit. 44, 46, 47, 60, 60, that makes sure that one gets out of orbit, or uh, out of the atmosphere, and blink. So now, ho, oh, <laughs> we're in a bit of a lopsized, uh, lopsided orbit, but in orbit nonetheless. Our low point is 75,000 feet meters above uh, the surface, which is outside the atmosphere, so we can hang out here as long as we want. We'll just keep flipping around and around and around and around as long as we don't get below 70,000 feet and start rubbing up against the atmosphere. We will never decelerate because there's no friction in space. There's nothing here to rub up against. Sad. Uh, and we'll just stay here. Uh, we want actually... Let's, let's, uh, let's even out our orbit, and I can show you how to use these little doogies. If you click anywhere on this little ball here, following your mouse cursor around, click up by the apoapsis, which is the most efficient place to do these kind of maneuvers that I'm about to do. Add a maneuver, and we're going to burn in the direction of travel. Prograde or something? Retrograde? Prograde? I don't even know. But just drag this little doogie out, and we want to make the projected periapsis and the projected apoapsis about the same. And they'll kind of make a crazy flip once you get to that point. So just watch for the flip. Boink! There we go. Close. 258 by 237. Close enough. So, and you can pop up your nav globe here to uh, see that. It's going to be a 5 second burn in 18 minutes and 13 seconds. And I'm kind of impatient. So let's just speed up time with the period and colon, or uh, comma keys. Uh, no, 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 we're going, well, some, okay, whatever. All right, we're going to get over there. Oh, you know what, I should probably slow down. Um, you can actually maneuver back here. You can also do some other screen, but what the, what the heck. Look for the little blue marker. Um, is that the right one? Yeah, well, there's two of them. The blue one, no, wait, there's not two of them. Ha <laughs> ha! The blue marker is the direction you need to burn uh, for your nav thing. So we'll just get our nose on that and then speed up time again. And watch the clock tick down. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Beep, beep. Get down below 30 seconds. Make sure we're still pointed in the right direction. You can hardly see my rocket because it's night time. There. Good job, Bill. So we have 17 seconds. The burn's only 
five. Oh, see, it's not even it's not even that. That's like a barely a maneuver at all. So uh, we'll wait. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we'll do it the map just for giggles. Burn. I'm burning very slowly. This uh, estimations are based on full throttle. I'm just going to burn lightly so you can watch it tick down. See, we have uh, 70 meters per second of delta V. That's change in velocity. Mm, astronaut. And um, this stuff is all wrong because I'm burning dumbly. So that matches up roughly. I don't, it's not quite there. That's right again. And eh, there, lines are nice and flush. We have gotten into the orbit we were planning by hook or crook. Mostly luck. Kill that. Now we're in a, uh, where are we? 237 by 262. Not a very good orbit, but you know what? We're in effing space, so shut up. I like it. It's orbital. <sighs> so, that's that. Now, um,. We can keep spinning around here like an idiot forever, or we can land. Landing is also a piece of cake. Um, this is a fairly circular orbit, so it doesn't really matter where we do it. Technically, you want to do it at the um, apoapsis, but whatever. Um, we're just going to burn retrograde. I'm not going to use a nav helper guide doohickey. Just going to spin around until we see the tail marker there. That's the opposite of the direction we're traveling. It's like a little imperial... Um, diplomatic transport thing and um, go back to the map start burning and watch whoo, watch our periapsis now slowly dip into the atmosphere we'll let it get down to say 30k uh -huh. and stop now that's not actually impacting the surface of carbon as you can see you could just keep burning until it impacts but we're going to use the atmosphere to slow down a bit, just because that's how the real pros do it. And uh, then we will drop into the water, hopefully, and not die. Ta-da! So let's um, speed up time again. Watch our altitude go... And it's going to make us actually not... Yeah, it's going to slow down our time warp. The closer you are to a body, the less you can warp. And now we're so close, we can't even do like non-simulated warp, we have to do physical warp, which is lame. Don't do this with the big ships. Um, the sped up calculations are not as accurate and it will cause your ship to explode. Or just break apart or something. So here we go, down to 53, 52. Watching Kerbin roll beneath us at a bazillion times normal speed. Whee! And we'll cross over here. We're going to start... Oh, yeah, we're starting to feel the effects of the atmosphere already. Um, oh, there we go. <laughs> the camera tends to change depending on where you are. Um, we're, we're close enough now that it's switched into, hey, you're going to run into this planet view. Um, I'm going to turn off SAS at this point because, you know, we're just going to tumble like a crazy thing. And let's see how... Okay. Oh, let me slow down a bit. Slow down time to regular... It's like flopping around in the atmosphere. Bill's totally okay with that. It should settle into a nice, you know, aerodynamic. It's going butt first, eventually. Let's let's help it. Just flip on SES while it's in the middle there. All right, chillax. There, that helped. And we're bleeding off speed. We're going 1,300 meters per second. Heat effects mean nothing at this point. They haven't added, like, damage or anything. It'll, you'll rip off solar panels and stuff, but you won't actually hurt yourself um, from this. Um, I guess I could actually technically burn, which will cause our... It's dropping rapidly. See how this is coming closer? We're burning retrograde. It's slowing down, decelerating. Gravity is taking over. Let's just use up all our fuel for why not. Oh, oh, oh no! See what I just did? I changed the stage. I decoupled the capsule from the rocket. <laughs> so now I have no control of the rocket, which is burning at full throttle. We're actually reversing direction, I think. Did we? <laughs> I think we start going to the direction. Anyway, there goes 
Bye! It's falling faster because it's larger and heavier, and larger and heavier things fall faster than lighter things. That's basic physics. I mean, drop a bowling ball and a marble. Anyway, um, we're just going to let him fall. There's no point in opening your chutes until, like, uh, until this is, like, below 200 meters per second or something. Anyway, about 5,000 feet, probably. It'll start out as a drag chute. And then finally pop up into a full shoot at 500. Um, I'm just going to let it fall for a while here because I don't want to wait for it to float gently to the ocean. It's faster this way. Just let it fall. We'll pop it a thousand. Why not? A thousand meters. Beep, beep. Bill's totally okay with this. Still decelerating. Like 120 meters per second, which is approximately four and a half miles per hour. I do math in my head. Oh, wait, parachute. There we go. Drag chute and pop open. There we go. Now we're, we're drifting. Oh, uh, rocket just uh, splashed down. And we're going to gently float her way down to the ocean. Blah, blah, blah. This is the boring part. It's like, I know uh, it's dangerous to speed up time here because if you, like, impact the ocean while you're in hyperspeed, the simulation, again, isn't very smart, and it tends to explode you. Also, don't ever let your parachute open or transition from drag to full with time acceleration on, because that will also make you explode. Your your chute will just pop right off. Uh, there's our shadow down there in the, in the Agua Firma. Oh, wait, there it is there. Um... Yeah, I'll go for my bite me. And it's gonna drift down. Whee! And plop! Safe landing. Bill Kerman is kind of a madman, so he's going to go EVA in the ocean and just float there. That's what he does. He's just gonna float there next to the capsule. Let go. Let go. There we go. He's swimming. Whee! He's swimming around. And now I'm going to leave him there to die. Alright. So now you can get a Dorbit and back out again and still kill your Kerbin. Not. Kerbin not. Kerbal. Kerbal. Congrats. You're going to die. Yeah.